How are you all doing tonight? My name is Big Bob Boy, and welcome to a hunter's guide to phase one and phase two bis. Maybe it's a little bit late for a P1 bis video since we're already in phase two, but they're mostly the same. I did want to get this out a little bit earlier, but uh, and this will also be really useful into phase three since season mastery moves so fast. It will be nearly impossible to complete an actual BIS list, but for this one there's actually multiple ways of gearing, so there isn't going to be just one BIS list. I'm going to cover the universal pieces first, ones you want for all sets. Then I'll talk about the different full sets, and I'll also be talking about pieces that may not be completely BIS, but are actually really good and you might want to wear them in the phase 3 depending on how your guild is going to handle the loot. So, let's look at that universal shit. But first, and it's been a long time coming, this video is sponsored by one of my favorite mobile games, Raid Shadow Legends, which yes, I do play. My name is Big Bobs, and I'm level 65. Let me tell you guys, Raid has a lot of nice things going on right now, including new Faction Wars crypts, tons of New Year's events and tournaments, dope new champions, and one of Raid's most recent additions, one of my favorites, the Hydra. This boss has six heads. Six heads. You fight four at a time, and all of them have different mechanics that change how you actually fight the boss, and also what strategy you need to come up with to take him down. Let me talk about a few of them. The Head of Wrath. This one has a mechanic that I really like. First, it puts taunt debuffs on your team, which forces that champion only do normal attacks against the debuffer. Then, once this guy takes 15 hits, he gets a massive buff vengeance, tripling his attack power and unleashing a huge attack. Do you try to take this head down in less than 15 attacks? Or try to shield and buff your defense so you can eat that vengeance? And also, the Head of Mischief. Yeah, that's a... Uh, Pretty accurate name. This head specifically goes out of his way to make the fight really chaotic. He can steal your buffs, he can put your buffs on other Hydra heads, he can even redirect your attacks. So imagine you go to attack this head, but he redirects the attack onto the Head of Wrath, proccing his vengeance. Oof, did it. Right now there's also a super limited edition champion, Alexander. Based on one of the most revered electronic sports players of our generation, Simple. He's a legendary champion with tons of bonuses for taking down orcs and ogren. The best part though, all you need to do to get him is log in for 7 consecutive days. He's even available for new and existing players, but he's only available until January 28th. I don't think there's ever been a better time to start raid. If you use my link in the description or scan my QR code, you'll get a free starter pack worth nearly 30 bucks giving you a free epic champion, Tay Rail. 200,000 silver, an energy refill, an XP boost, and an ancient shard, so you can summon another champion as soon as you start. All that treasure will be right here, so click here to grab it. This amazing bonus is reserved for new players only, and only for the next 30 days, so get in there quick. By the way, Tay Rail is an amazing champion, one of my favorites. And if you already happen to play Raid, tell me in the comments who is your number one favorite champion. Mine is definitely Foley. Look at this dude. Damn. He looks awesome. A massive thanks to Raid for the sponsor. Don't forget to check the description for that promo code. Right. Back to Universal Shit. Necklace. It's the Ani Pendant. In phase 1 and 2, there's nothing that comes close to the Ani Pendant. It's really, really good. Comes from the Onyxia head, which does drop every time, but it's pretty contested. Tanks really, really need this, and it's also really good for melee. But on the plus side, if you can't get this as a hunter, it's really not that big of a deal. You can use Celerity in the meantime for a loss. It's not a big loss, but it is a loss but then replace it in BWL with Prestors, which is better for us than Ani Pendant, by quite a bit actually, in nearly every case. So use Celerity, upgrade it to Ani if you can, 
otherwise we'll get Prestor's next phase. If your guild is giving Prestor's to rogues who already have Ani pendants over you, leave that fucking guild. Cape. Cape is pretty easy, it's Shrouded Mists. I mean, come on, obviously it's Shrouded Mists. Shrouded Mists from Rag is really, really good. It's an item we would normally replace in AQ40, but honestly, with how fast SOM is going, we probably won't replace it until Nax. Possibly AQ20 with a hit cape, depending on how things go, but probably not. In any case, this is the one we want and will wear for a really long time in every set. Baron Cloak is still our number two, but... Phase 2 brought out Kazak and Azergos. Thankfully, we don't need anything from Kazak, but Azergos drops. uh. Puissant Cape. And it's actually decent. You're probably never gonna get this. I know I'm not gonna get it. It won't fit anywhere into our actual BIS, but it can be used if you're really low on hit while working on getting other gear. Rings. Okay. Okay. People lose their goddamn minds when it comes to rings, and I really don't know why. Maybe to justify the amount of time they spent in AV? I don't fucking know, bud guy. But here's how rings go. You'll probably be using two tarnished elven rings for a long time. And that's okay because they are really, really good rings. Let's compare it to Don Julio. You lose a ton of agility to gain some crit. It is better. Don Julio's is better than Tur, but it's probably the smallest upgrade you will ever have in all of Season of Mastery. I am not joking. It is a tiny upgrade. Going from Shadow Prowlers to Baron, it's like five times as big of an upgrade. I cannot stress how small of an upgrade Don Julio's actually is. Don't farm AV Exalted just for Don Julio's. If you want the mount or something, fine. But there's a lot of better things you could do with your time. Farm gold. Make sappers. Make fun of the new Star Wars trilogy. There's a ton of things you could do. Band of Akiria. On the other hand, this ring is actually very good. We would like to have this, but it's going to be tough for us to get it. It's probably going to go to tanks first, especially in SOM. And we can live without it. If you get it, great. That will let you drop a hit. But in a lot of sets, there's not really a great place to drop one hit. Although, QSR. So, Quick Strike Ring kind of sucks. <laughs> It's another one of those rings that people lose their shit over for no reason. It's not better than Tur. 30 AP is inferior to 15 agility. One crit is a little better than one hit. And it's especially better if that hit is totally wasted, but that's basically never going to happen. We don't have a lot of gear this phase that has hit. It's not like in TBC where we were drowning in a piss-colored sea of hit. The only time you'd really get much out of QSR in this phase is if you also get Akiria. So Akiria and QSR is noticeably better than 2 Tur. It's not massive, but it's there and definitely better than Don Julio's. So in the upcoming sets, I'll show QSR and Akiria. But remember that two tur is fine. And you can replace one tur with Don Julio's if you just hate life and farm AV for one. Okay, did that clear up rings? Probably not. Let's move on anyway. Trinkets. No change. They are the same as pre-raid. Eldrathalus and Blackhand's Breath. You can also use Devil Sore if you want to do a trinket swap. Alright, so that's all of the universal pieces. Let's talk about these full sets now. Giant Stalker. So the first set we're going to talk about, it's full Giant Stalker, 8 out of 8. It's best to not split up Giant Stalker if you can help it, because the 8 piece bonus is honestly pretty good. Here's what the full set of this Giant Stalker is going to look like. Let's do a rundown. I'm going to dive in to the rundown. Alright, it's 8 out of 8 Giant Stalker. I already said that and it's kind of evident. 
We already talked about the neck, rings, and trinket, so that just brings us to the weapons. For stat sticks, Corehound Tooth and Brutality Blade with 15 agility and chance. Actually beats out Huntsman's Harpoon. It's not a massive thing, so go for CHT and Brute Blade unless you plan on doing any weaving, like any at all, because it will only take a few hits per fight for Huntsman's Poon to slip its sopping self ahead. And the range slot is, well, it's Rock Delar. Rock isn't amazing, but there's just no real competition. But we're gonna need a biznix. So in a rare case here, Hunter Jesus has actually fucked us. It must be some kind of test of faith. But yeah, anything other than biznix is a loss. You can swap to a serve subspec for sure-footed, then use a damage scope, but it's a loss. I wouldn't say it's like splendiferous, no. I wouldn't say it's tremendous, but yeah, it is noticeable, so avoid that if you can. Have your guild get you a biznix if you're the giant stalker hunter. What if you're not the giant stalker hunter? You're going to be the first dragon stalker hunter. Well, you are fucked, bud. Going for two dragon stalker and no giant stalker, it's bad. Honestly, the best that I could come up with was this. Necklace, rings, cape, trinket, weapons, range, that's all going to stay the same. The changes here are dragon stalker helm and pants which are both really good pieces. Then, wrist guards of true flight for bracers and marksman's girdle for belt. That's fine, those are good pieces. They're not giant stalker and it makes sense. Problem is the chest, shoulders, boots, and the gloves. Yeah, you kinda can't get away from giant stalker. The next best option for those slots is just the pre-raid option. So, SGC, Beastmaster, that kind of thing. Honestly, this set just sucks. There's not much that you can do about it. If you're going to skip Giant Stalker and be the first Dragon Stalker Hunter, you're just kind of dicked in this phase. Even with these Giant Stalker pieces, it's quite a bit less damage than full Giant Stalker. If this is you, you're going to kind of suck this phase, but um, at least you'll be really good next phase. Okay, and now for the absolute top DPS, majorly sweaty, maximumly greasy, rank 14 PvP set. This is a lot of damage. Even compared to the full Giant Stalker, there's a, uh, like a hefty, almost girthy, like a full girth more DPS to this set than Giant Stalker. You're going to wear the full six pieces of PvP gear. That gives you the gloves with their multi-shot bonus and the six piece agility bonus. The individual pieces are also just all really, really good. Even compared to the Giant Stalker set, you're gonna gain like 800 health, although you do lose out on a little bit of resistances. Now, you do need to make up some hit on the off pieces. Necklace, cape, and trinket are gonna be the same as all the other sets, but you can use true flight bracers for a hit with the Giant Stalker belt. You could also use Giant Stalker Belt and Giant Stalker Bracers with Akiria and Don Julio's for the rings to make up for the hit. That's slightly worse, but pretty damn close. Marksman's Belt, Giant Stalker Bracers is also an option, but surprisingly, that one's a little bit too low, I'd say. And now for the weapons, so... Yeah, the Rank 14 one-handers are better stat sticks than Brutality Blade and Core Hound Tooth, so... Yeah, you're going to use those unless you weave. Where you might actually be surprised is your ranged slot. Use the crossbow. The rank 14 crossbow and gun are both okay. They are better than Rock the Lar. Like I said before, Rock the Lar is not that impressive. So in this situation, okay is better than not that impressive. If you're a dwarf, you can even use the rank 14 gun. But... I'm not going to make a bis list for rank 14 dwarf specifically, no, just, nope. I'm not sure why people hate on the rank 14 ranged weapons so much, they're fine, except for the bow. Don't use that one, it has a really bad speed. You will need a biznix on your ranged weapon for this PvP set, but if you can get rank 14, you can get a biznix. What about the blue PvP set? 
I'm not going to make a fourth set just for that, but it's also really good. But if you're going to get that, you may as well go balls deep and go all the way to 14. I guess if you're going to be the Dragon Stalker Hunter, could be a good set to use in the meantime until you can start getting more than two pieces of Dragon Stalker. So a quick set overview in case this got complicated. There are reasons why I made multiple sets. The PvP set is the best. But a lot of people, myself included, do not feel like grinding to rank 14 again, even though it's faster, and even though it's a good set, that set is just fucking out. If only the best is good enough for you, you gotta get rank 14. The Giant Soccer set is gonna be the second best for phase 1, but because of how gearing is in Season of Mastery, not all hunters are gonna be able to get that. I would expect one, maybe two if you get lucky full sets of Giant Stalker for a raid before BWL comes out. And since the AP's bonus is really good, you don't want to spread that gear around. Four hunters with Giant Stalker spread around and no full sets is shit. Don't do that. Similarly, Dragon Stalker is best when you have 8 out of 8. In my raid, I'm funneling all Giant Stalker to two hunters and all Dragon Stalker to two different hunters. Survival Considerations well, there really aren't any in this phase. There's basically no AP gear that we use. I guess the one-handers, but Warhound Tooth and Brutality Blade win over Harpoon, even as survival for stat sticks. But you're probably going to weave a little as serve, so you use the Poon Stick anyway. Only other piece of AP gear would be QSR, and its place won't change for serve. As serve, you could also just skip Biznix entirely for damage scope, since that's the same hit you can get from Surefooted. Other than that, serve is basically the same. Enchants. Alright, enchants are still pretty simple, so I'll cover them pretty quickly. Helm and Pants. We need Librum of Voracity. Take the Aid Agility version. Some people have asked about the Haste enchant, since it's much cheaper. Unfortunately, that one is balls. It seems cool, and we do a lot of auto shot damage, but yeah, it's just balls. Shoulders, doesn't matter. Cape, lesser agility, that's going to be three agility. Chest, four to all stats, if you can get it. Otherwise, three to all stats. Bracers, go nine stam or one agility. I prefer nine stam, but if you have the PvP set, you are very unlikely to need any more stam. Gloves. Greater agility. That's 7 agility. The 15 agility enchant is not in yet as far as I know. But they did move some other enchants around. So maybe it is in, but I doubt it. Boots. 7 agility or run speed. It's up to you. There is a case for both. Weapons. For one-handers, you get two 15 agility enchants. And for two-handers, we want that 25 agility enchant. For your ranged slot, the scope will change. We want to avoid Biznix if we can because it's expensive as fuck. But sometimes you can't help it. I covered which scope is needed in the sets already, but you'll either have Biznix or 7 damage scope. And that is Season of Mastery Phase 1 and Phase 2 Bis. Shit, it was a little bit late, but that was an in-depth and much-needed BIS list. Whenever I write a BIS list, I look around at other BIS lists to see if I fucked up, because that can happen. There were like no BIS lists for Season of Mastery. The only ones I did find mostly sucked, so I hope this can help. Let me know how gearing has been going for you guys in the comments. I started off great. Got three Giant Stalker my first MC then almost nothing since. We've seen zero leaves. I'm really hoping to get 8 out of 8 Giant Stalker before BWL. Hopefully Hunter Jesus will provide. Also, I'm back to drinking heavily every day to kind of make these videos go smoother. Maybe you can tell, maybe you can't. Let me know that as well in the comments. If you enjoyed the video, hit that sub button, bell, like button, give me 8 out of 8 Giant Stalker button, share button, all that other shit. I appreciate each and every one I get. This channel even has memberships now. You can check them out by clicking the join button right by the sub button. 
It is absolutely the best way to support the channel and you'll get some really cool emotes. Plus it's way better and cheaper than a Twitch sub. I stream right here on YouTube at times. I hope you'll join me. But that is going to be all for this one. I really appreciate you all watching and I will see you all for the next one.